Hi guys, this is Dr. Nancy. Today we're having our first episode of behind the scenes interviews. Today it's our pleasure to have Louise Adams Dunstan from Darburn Recruitment. How are you, Louise? Very well, thank you. Thanks for having me, Nancy. Yeah, very glad to have you as our very first guest. <laughs> awesome. So when I talk about the series as behind the scenes is that lots of candidates today are looking for jobs or on the other side of the table, there's lots of experienced candidates, lots of recruiters reach out to them. Mm -hmm. People are quite confused on the other side of the table, yep. right? What's behind the scenes? How does this thing operate? And how can you have more information helping them to understand the decision making process and eventually improve the chance of being like, employed by the right employer. Yep. So therefore today we are very lucky to have Luis in the audience with us today. Okay, so Luis, can you tell us more about um, Darwin Recruitment and how are you guys different from other recruiting firms? Uh, so I'll introduce Darwin Recruitment briefly. Yeah. Um, Darwin Recruitment has been running for almost 19 years now actually really successfully in Europe. Uh, mm -hmm. We have multiple office locations in Amsterdam, uh, we have offices in Munich, Switzerland and just outside of London in Essex. Wow. Um, and in 2016 we decided to go international, uh, which is basically where I come in, um, and we opened our first office in Boston. Oh, oh the first one in Boston? Yeah. Well, okay, it's right in the WeWork building, in right? Building, yeah, in this very building. Right here in downtown Boston, guys. So. Um, our, our job really is to help people within the technology sector find new opportunities yeah. um, and then vice versa for the, for the businesses, for the clients who are looking for very niche types of profiles within the space. You know, we go out there and we actually headhunt those specific profiles, whether that be on the, the kind of active or the, uh, the passive markets, just depends on the type of skill set they're looking for. Awesome. Okay, so you, can you also help me to understand the recruiting process? As you mentioned, you have been in the space for 19 years. So what does it look like to recruit the best candidate behind the scenes, sure. remember? Uh, one thing I will say is I don't think there's any reinventing the process. Um, to be a good recruiter, at the very least, you have mm -hmm. to be good at the process. Yeah. So it can go two ways, really. You know, if someone's looking for an opportunity, what we tend to do is speak to the individual, understand them from a personal perspective, try to understand what their technical skills are. Yeah. Um, firstly, talk about the businesses that they're working with at the moment, and then to think forward and, and think about who else we could then market them to. Mm -hmm. So obviously, if they're working for one business and there's some obvious competitors, naturally, there's a very good opportunity for us to reach out to those businesses yeah. and say, hey, look, we've got this person. Um, this is what they like from a personal perspective. These are the technical skills, mm -hmm. um, and this is where they're working right now. Normally that's the, the, the swiftest and smoothest transition. You can take one person from one job and put them into another. Um, and in terms of the process, really it, it goes from us speaking to the candidate, mm -hmm. identifying those things, yeah. spending time then going out and identifying businesses that they might be interested in or attracted to based on our conversation, identifying who the right hiring managers are mm -hmm. or who the right people in the recruitment teams are to then actually create an opportunity for us to take their profile the notes that we've made and pitch yeah. them to the business. And then from there, in an ideal world, they will be interested in having a further conversation with their candidate. Wow. At which point, we would then reach back out to the candidate, mm -hmm. schedule times for interviews, work as closely as we can, firstly to understand the business, to so then educate the candidate as much as we can about that business so mm -hmm. they're prepared for their interview. Once they've had the interview, we debrief the candidates, talk about their experiences, um, relay those to both the client and the candidate from both sides and we pretty much manage that process right up until the point where in an ideal world they're going on site, they do really well and then they get an offer. Um, we're here to help also through the offer, offer management process so we've been doing this for many years. Um, it's, it's kind of a taboo subject because people don't really know how hard they can push. Um, what I am exactly. noticing in the market though is, is the money is often a byproduct of the interview process. So if you present yourself well yeah. and you show that you've got the right skills, it's very rare that you'll find a business will under offer um, or they come in at a ridiculously high value. They're, they're very conscious of the market, they're very aware of, of what, what's right and what suits yeah. different profiles, but we're here to help in the negotiation process. And then that's, like that. once you've actually secured the position for these guys, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't stop there. So actually the post-sale post service is, is probably the most important part. So 
once someone starts in a role, making sure that their first week's great, their first month's great, yeah. um, any challenges that come across, we, we kind of act as a third party, almost like a, a mediator between the business and the candidate. Mm-hmm. So if there's things that we can improve on or change to make sure that they're happy in their role, yeah. we're here to do that. And then awesome. from a business perspective, you know, if we give them a great service, mm-hmm. um, hopefully if it comes around that they're looking for an opportunity in the future or they have friends that yeah. we, you know, we're, we're here to help moving forward as well. So. It's, um, it's a pretty intense process and there's a lot that goes on behind closed doors and actually you'd think that we kind of just sit here making loads of money and you know we live in these great like, yeah it's challenging like, we, we so are... tell me tell me more about what make it so challenging was it because you're not able to find the perfect candidate so qualified or there are so many competitions in the market can help them to find the specific job that they really love. I think there's probably multiple reasons why it's challenging. Mm-hmm. Um, one thing I, I would say is you could probably relate to being as a product manager. You, yeah. When you have a product, you understand the product and you know how it works, right? Yeah. Except our product changes its mind. We work with people. Oh, so that, yes. The people is a product. Exactly. Really because mm-hmm. it could be anything from, um, you know, you just wake up one morning and change your mind and decide you don't want to go for this interview. And that happens. Yeah. Um, or it could be that another company comes in with a fantastic offer that you never saw coming, or you never thought was going to happen, and mm-hmm. we're in the background trying to manage all of these things and these expectations, both from the candidate and the client side. Yeah. So that, as a recruiter, is a real challenge. You know, we're, we're doing this with not just one person at any one given time. It could be 10, 15 people we have in a process yeah. at any one time with, with five different businesses. Mm-hmm. So every single process has a slightly different challenge going on. Um, so there's, there's a lot that we try and do to make everybody feel comfortable. Yeah. And, it, and it is interesting to hopefully get some, some of this out there and people to realize that, that it, you know, we, we are being challenged and we are trying to do our best to help you. So one of the one things that I would ask and that, mm-hmm. that, that I think would solve a lot of problems is just clarity and transparency. Our conversations and the relationships that we're trying to build, you know, if, if there's yeah. something you're not happy about, tell me because I could exactly. potentially do something about it. The same thing as for the as a product management space, yeah. we talk about doing customer feedback, right? Customer mm-hmm. survey. So you're doing the same thing so that you can do your own MPV yeah. <laughs> and do pivot and learn from it. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and, and at the end of the day, look, we, we are trying to find you the best opportunity for you mm-hmm. because quick wins just aren't. They sound great on paper and okay, we might get paid quickly, but the chances are you won't be happy in your role. Um, you won't stay for long and you probably won't use us again. Exactly. So I want to listen to what you, you want to find and what you're interested in and where you want to go. I, I want you to find a job and stay there for the long term. Oh, I love this. Like that, that's important to us, not only from a personal perspective, because it, it makes me want to come back the next day to work, exactly. but also from a financial perspective. You know, we, we, we make more money as recruiters just being very open if we find people with the perfect roles and the roles that they're interested in, that they stay long term. Exactly. So something you mentioned earlier, let me catch this, yeah. which really triggers something different from most people thought, is that, for example, today is my personal, speaking of my personal experience, every week a recruiter reach out to me on LinkedIn. Yeah. They're saying, oh, we have a new job here and there. Sounds like what you did was you go in to identify, is this the right client for me to work with or not? Yeah. Then you build relationship with him or her. Then you give her five options. Is that how it works? Well, it could be. It just depends on what their skill set is. So one thing I did mention is that the way our business and our team are set up mm-hmm. is that each individual consultant has a specialism, a technology specialism. So in yeah. my case, <clears throat> AI, I, assume. I look after AI, data science, machine learning. Yeah. So when I'm contacting certain people, I'm running searches based on their skill set within that technology vertical. Yeah. Um, so I already know the space in terms of which businesses are looking, mm-hmm. and typically I'll pick a bunch of clients that they might be interested, in, and then we talk through them on an individual basis. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Great. So just another tip for people in the in the audience and in front of our videos today is that, in general, from my personal experience, not all the recruiters they were just checking with you all the time. From my personal experience, let's say 10% of recruiters reach out to me after I said no, or I am not interested, they stopped. Yeah. 10%, yeah, only 90% stopped, and 10% of them, like what you mentioned, and actually there's another woman say every 
half a year, whatever, just follow up. Oh, they, she's like sincerely took the notes of what I said and came back a year later or half a year later when there is the right trigger point for me to consider new opportunities or looking for new challenges. That's something very unique for you guys. I like that. I think so. I think you know, at the end of the day, we're people as well, right? Yeah. Although, although we're titled recruiters and sometimes tarnished with a brush that doesn't you know, always give us the best impression, but I, I much prefer working and finding friends jobs and, and I try and create relationships with people yeah. I work with to the point where you know, a year down the line, I'm going for a beer with them and we're, we're not even talking about work. Mm -hmm. you know, that, that for me is a, is a great sense of achievement when you can get to that point. Um, so we, we are trying our best to help and I think it's just if we're giving back and forth in this industry and, and we're transparent, that's where we're going to make the most progress. Yeah. Um, so the, my advice would be, you know, if, if you do find a recruiter you like, um, be transparent with them. Don't hide anything. Um, they're only asking for information and, and, and questions and stuff like that because mm -hmm. they want to create the best opportunity for you. We, we, we work on your behalf for free, by the way. Yeah, I know. Until you really land the job, the perfect job for us. Yeah. Got you. Okay, let's talk about the transparent part, which lots of my students ask me this question yeah. regarding when do you tell the recruiter the salary expectations? So because I teach negotiation, yeah. people always come to me, should I tell them? They ask me how much. My assumption is for the recruiting company I work with, I should be very transparent regarding my expectations, how much I'm getting paid right now, right? Again, it's a bit, it's, it's a taboo subject because some people don't want to talk about these things. Yeah, and, exactly. And I understand what, that. What do you think? Uh -huh. Well, in order for us to be able to negotiate for you on your behalf, yeah. we, we do need to know these things. It helps. Um, yeah. I've placed people where we hadn't discussed salary until the very last, uh, literally the very last moment. But then when the client comes in and doesn't offer the salary that they were hoping for, uh -huh. and then they go, what happened? And I'm like, well, you didn't tell me. So how could I ever prep the client? Because we're... We're not only managing you; we manage the client's expectations. Exactly. So my advice would be: be transparent. You know, we're we're not out there throwing your salary around and, and showing everyone what it is. It's literally for us to be able to make sure that when we negotiate for you, my advice would just be transparent. Like, yeah, yeah. Build, build trust and, and trust that that recruiter is there to help you. Um, look, I can't talk on behalf of all recruiters, but but I think that's the best way to, to go, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Yeah, exactly. And actually, just also, same thing as you cannot speak on behalf of yeah. all the recruiters. Yeah. I cannot speak on, on behalf of all the hiring managers, so I hire product managers. But in general, when I work with my other candidates, my client working with negotiations, in general, I encourage them to share with headhunters their salary expectations. And later on, with the hiring company is a different strategy. But with Headhunter, who is a middleman, I, I really encourage transparency upfront. Yeah, that's something I agree with as well. Okay, so my next question is, now we have seen thousands, like tens of thousands, I don't know how many of thousands candidates. <laughs> what do you think can make them stand out? And what are your client looking for? It's because it's two-way like transaction, like matchmaking in my <laughs> in my case, right? Uh, is that the employers, let's say uh, technology companies, so many of AI companies out there, we have stack of ten candidates. What do I choose a uh, ten? Who stands out? And you have representing them before. So what's behind the scenes? Who stands out? Mm. I guess it's dependent on, there's a lot of variables, um, industry, yeah. technology, um, level of skill. Um, I feel like one of the key things that would make you stand out once you're in the process, at the very least, is self-awareness. Mm -hmm. So um, if you don't know how to do something, that, that's okay. Um, but showing that you're self-aware of something you're good at and something you're not good at, and understanding the process of learning. Yeah. So, so being able to say, okay, well I might not, get this now or might not be as good now, but I understand for me to get good, this is what steps I would need to follow. Yeah. I think that takes anyone who might have almost got the job because they wasn't self-aware to get the job, in my opinion. Um, now that's not to say that, that that's gonna be the solution for everybody. Um, yeah. Certainly the way that I'm used in, in the recruitment process by businesses, mm -hmm. um, if they're looking for a real high level data scientist um, with a very niche set of skills, that isn't always gonna be the case. So it could be a specific set of skills that you either have or you don't. Um, and if you don't have them, sometimes it's just not gonna happen. We get paid a lot of money for what we do. Yeah. Um, 
which is you know, which is why often we don't necessarily work on more entry level roles. There are recruitment businesses out there to do that. Yeah. But we're a slightly higher level advanced um, exec search company in mm-hmm. that sense. But um, yeah, my, my, my one piece of advice would be just be self aware. Um, if you work with a good recruiter, I, I wouldn't worry about standing out. My job is to make you stand out. Yeah. Um, and the difference between me making you stand out and you applying yourself is when you apply yourself, you're going to end up on the bottom of a thousand CVs. Mm-hmm. When you work with a good recruiter who has relationships with businesses, I'm going to call the hiring manager directly, yeah. talk him through the conversation that we've had, and then I'm because the, hopefully the hiring manager trusts me. Mm-hmm. When I say this is someone you need to speak to, because they're going to have that conversation with you. Yeah, exactly. So from the employer's perspective, so I work for one of the top twenty, not like right, the Fortune twenty. I work for the Fortune 20 tech company. I'm also a hiring manager. I hire product managers. So lots of time when we hire candidates, there are several existing relationships, like what you described, the the recruiting company. They will call us ahead of time. Then we tell them this I'm looking for. We try candidate A, B, C, didn't work. Make sure you do this so that you can actually, it's a win-win, so that we can tell you exactly what works, what doesn't work, so that you can always bring me the best candidate. So save time for everybody. The time is money, right? Oh. If, if you're spending time looking through resumes that aren't relevant, um, that's not good for anybody. So yeah. as much as we're trying to build a relationship and trust with a candidate, we do the same with the hiring manager, and a smooth process is a happy process um, for, for everybody involved. Yeah, exactly. Very cool. So sounds like if you are senior executive level, you should work with a third party recruiter. Just personal opinion, not I'm this is not sponsored video by the way. <laughs> yeah. So final question to you, Louis, is do you have any success stories that you can share with us? I mean, there's there's many success stories and there's there's many unsuccessful stories. Um, yeah. some uh, some are quite interesting, some are quite funny. Tell me the Exciting, interesting story. I would one more, more, more one that stands out than anything that I think, for a sense of fulfilment in that we found the gentleman the role, um, but also we did way more um, that now has led us to be friends and you know, like I said, we go out for beers together. So we found a candidate for a client, uh, an e-commerce business that we support in in, in Boston. Uh-huh. Um, by chance, we came across this gentleman in Australia um, and. I'm not sure if everybody knows, but actually it's quite an easy transfer from Australia to America. I don't know. Yeah. It's so hard for me to move here. I'm from China, by the way, guys. Different story. It's a very similar process to being in Canada. You know, you, you, you turn up to the embassy with a, a, a job offer and they go, okay, cool, it's 50 bucks, and you're on a, on a plane over to the destination. Um, but there's always way more moving parts when it comes to people that are slightly more experienced or slightly older, whatever it might be, in that you might have children, you might have a family, you might be having other things that that might create variables in that sense. Um, And this gentleman had a wife and a kid. Um, In order for them to move, we don't just work with the individual we found a job for, by the way. You know, um, you have to consider family in this case. She worked in the medical space, Boston, a great place for that. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, so we reached out to a bunch of different uh, medical organizations, hospitals, um, literally told them the, the, the spill about, you know, we've got a guy who just found a job. We're not actually looking to place this woman. There's no fee involved. We mm-hmm. just need to find her an opportunity to come in and interview with you guys. Gotcha. Um, so you place her without charging a fee at all? No. Yeah, wow. So we, we didn't, charge, didn't charge a fee. Um, the reason being is, is there really isn't any, you know, there's no upside for us p- picking up a hospital. We're a tech focused mm-hmm. recruitment business, we started picking up jobs for nurses and doctors and stuff, There's, we can't fill those roles. Yeah. So it was more a case of, you know, we're supporting this gentleman um, and this is part of us supporting him. Mm-hmm. Um, we introduced him to a bunch of real estate agents as well, um, who created some opportunities to go and see apartments that were within wow. his budget. Um, and then when we got here, you know, we, we literally showed him around Boston. Um, we had a great experience with him. It's a summer or winter? It was in summer. Right. <laughs> Right time to show you yeah, them. Yeah. Um, we, we are we are helpful, but not as helpful in winter. <laughs> no, but um, but no, he's become a good friend of ours now. And um, okay, like we got paid for the process, but it was actually the sense of fulfillment at the end of it, where yeah. the guy constantly calls us up and, and tells us how much of a great experience he's had and how much he's enjoying his time in Boston. And, and I know that if anyone ever asks him again to potentially look for an opportunity, or if they were looking for an opportunity, I know he's going to reach out to us. So from a long-term business perspective, you know, that's, that's going to pay dividends. 
yeah, I like that. You just move the whole family to yeah. Boston. It sounds like an end-to-end process. That's when we launch technology product. You don't yeah. just sell a product. Hope for the best, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's all the best. No tech, uh, no support, nothing. Actually, as you said, quite relevant to a product management, as you mentioned earlier. And like end-to-end -end support, and also continue to provide value. Yeah. Sometimes the value is free value, but people just always remember your brand, and they will always come back. I love that. Awesome. awesome. Okay, great. So this is the end of our interview session. If you like similar kind of interviews to see the behind the scenes series, please leave me a comment, give me a sum up, a sum up, and also really appreciate your time watching this video. Really means a lot to us, to me and Louis. Hopefully you can have great success in your job hunting or negotiation process. Thank you everyone. This is Dr. Nancy. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.